that's what I'm talking about, you know, because, right. you know, like God, you know, he, he left the 99 and went to that, that, that single, you know, and this, that was just the best yeah. part of my show right there. <laughs> you yeah. know, showed humility and just took care of that dude, met him where he was and showed some humidity, uh, humility. And by the end of the show, that dude, you know, stepped up and, um, and was one of the boys. Welcome to the Men's Alliance podcast. Men's Alliance is a growing movement of tribes across the nation that meet weekly for rugged outdoor workouts and a real world devotion around a fire. If you want to be a part of what we're doing, join us at mensalliancetribe.com where you can find a tribe near you or come to one of our Start the Fire weekends. So check us out at mensalliancetribe.com. Now stay tuned for this great podcast. Welcome to the Men's Alliance podcast. I'm Dave Mills Goose. And I'm Dusty Parker Shadow. And with us today, we have got Mark Rogers, call sign Breach. Good morning. And Breach, welcome to the show, brother. Good morning. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. So good Breach, to be here. Breach is a tribe leader for Chainbreakers Tribe in La Plata, Maryland. And um and it was cool just talking with you a minute ago before we started about how you heard of us. And yeah. um and, yeah. and it was really just a total God thing. And it was a total accident. We weren't even looking for our group. And God brought Rick into the to the room where we were. And uh, and here we are today, man. So, here we are today. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, so, guys, this is part two of a leadership series that that we're doing with five different tribe leaders, five different states. And each one of these five episodes we're doing on leadership, what we're doing is we're using the uh, television series Band of Brothers uh, to just go through it, talk about it, because it's so rich and full of leadership lessons. There are some examples of great leaders and some examples of terrible leaders and and all kinds of stuff in between and great opportunities to um, to kind of like mine through these episodes these 10 episodes of band of brothers and by the way if you haven't watched band of brothers definitely encourage you to do it it's an amazing mini series um it's uh historically accurate yeah. it was written by a historian um stephen ambrose and uh, then it was adapted into into the screen uh by tom hanks and steven spielberg but it's originally a um, a work of history by a history professor who did all the firsthand interviews with all the men of Easy Company um, while they were all still living, and uh, took all their interviews and and wrote the book Band of Brothers. And so that's what we're what we're talking about today. So Breach is with us as we are going through uh, episodes three and four. Yes. So last week we were with uh, Tech Ian out of uh oregon for episodes one and two and uh this week we're with breach out of maryland for episodes three and four so with kind of all that foundation laid there um just gonna tee you up to talk about whatever you want to breach uh with this big question give us give us a uh an example from let's let's just kind of do episode three first what's what's something in there that you you saw that you want to share with us um about leadership, good, bad, or ugly? There's a lot, to be honest. Um, but let me start by saying that I, I I didn't watch this episode or this series before, um, you know, you asked me to. So this was like initially the first time, I, you know, I've been watching it. I kind of avoided it because of the whole combat thing and stuff. And I get a little emotional, but, um, but uh, you know, I manned up and I'm, you know, uh, and so here we are. And I'm, and I'm loving it. I'm glad I did. Good. That's but, good um, to hear. But uh, for episode three, a lot of things stick out. But the first thing, like towards the first beginning of the episode, when uh, le uh, Lieutenant, I'm not sure if he was a captain yet, but uh, mm -hmm. ca Captain Winters says to uh, his buddy, this is a clear cut example of, you know, lieutenants skipping out of training in their academy, you know, at the academy. Mm -hmm. And remember how they were getting lost, kept getting lost and kept getting lost and unnecessary things kept happening. And uh that's an example of a bad leadership for them, but also, you know, for him to recognize that. Uh, I actually, I like that a lot uh, from Lieutenant Winters. 
Yeah. Ten, yeah. Lieutenant Winters is, um, he's probably, to me, he's probably the most obvious leader that I, that I favored a lot. Sure. But, um, I have to go, but I want to, I want to share with you the, the guy that probably resonates the most with me is, uh, okay. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Compton. Okay. Yeah. Lieutenant Compton. He's, he's probably the one that resonates with me the most because, you know, he, you know, he kind of likes to get along with the guys a lot. He likes to party with them, kind of gamble. He probably shouldn't, you know, mm-hmm. but he does, you know, and, um, the reason why it resonates is because when I started becoming a leader, like leading, actually leading troops, you know, I learned that, you know, you kind of have to not be so cookie cutter, you know, and, and like let your guard down and, and become more approachable, you know? So that's what I liked about him because, you know, it's important for the guys to re- to be able to, you know, feel like they can, you know, approach you and, and look at you as a regular human being because they look up to you. They already think you're up here, but no, nah, I'm just a dude just like you are, you know? And that means mm-hmm. a lot to me, you know, a lot to me. <laughs> So you, you identified a little bit with him. Tell us a little bit about your background um, that you're okay. referring to there. What, when when were you leading? Tell us tell us some of your experience. Okay. Uh, so I was in the Army for five years, and then um, I got medically discharged. So unfortunately, I was actually going to go uh, going to go try out for Green Berets, but I ended up, you know, being able to not being able to go for it. So I got medically discharged, but I still aspired you know, to be in the tactical field. So uh, my, uh, I joined my first federal agency after that and uh, got the opportunity to go to SWAT school, sniper school, a couple of sniper schools. And so I joined the tactical field and eventually um, left the federal government, went contractor, did some, some counter sniper for uh, two years in Afghanistan. That was my first time I actually got to started to become like a leader. I got to lead some, uh, some foreign nationals a little bit, but, um, so it was a good startup. Um, but then after that, uh, then I joined the U S marshals and I've been with them for the last 14 years in the marshal service. I got to lead a small unit tactics team. And that's where the whole rough growth process where, I mean, I see myself in Lieutenant Sokol a little bit where he was kind of, he was insecure. You know, and he was a jerk to his troops, you know, and um, I was insecure, not because I wasn't, um, not because I wasn't confident in my abilities, but, you know, some things that happened to me as a child, you know, and just ended up kind of um, being one of my characteristics that I had to iron out. But anyway, um, you know, we worked through it, read some books, you know, just lots of prayer and just trusting God. But eventually I became the leader that I wanted, the type of leader that I wanted to have, you know? And um, first things first was like, for me was always how their family life was, where their head was, you know? And then we talked about the mission because that's, because those things last longer, you know, the family life, you know, was always going to be there a whole lot longer than after the mission and after work. But, uh, but still in the March service, I'm no longer in the field, but um, now I'm doing more instructing, helping out with the academy and all that stuff. Firearms instructor and tactics instructor, but man, you yeah, you you, you just for real, yeah, you just said an <laughs> awful lot there. There's know, so much to what you just said. That's amazing, and I want to try to go back to some of those things you just said. Um, you know, one of the things was you said you became the leader that you wanted to have. Yes, I think that's an amazing way to look at it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, if you if a guy ask himself, man, what, what kind of leader do I want to follow? Okay. List those qualities. Describe that guy, that pretend imaginary, perfect leader that you would follow into a difficult, dangerous situation. What's that guy like? Okay. Now become that guy. Yes. And it's going to take work. It's not going to, yes. it's not going to be like just flipping a switch. But another thing you said really, really cool is Kind of like you noticed or somehow identified what you perceived to be a shortcoming in your own leadership. Yeah. A lack yeah. of self-confidence, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you little... share with us kind of how did you come to see that this was a deficiency? Did somebody else point this out to you or did you just feel like it was? Yes. Well, I, I felt it. 
Um, and at first I would think, you know, I'm just a humble guy, you know, I'm just humble. Yeah, I've accomplished a lot of things, but that's because that's what I wanted to do. It wasn't because I wanted to, you know, show off or like, yeah, I got the shirt or whatever. You know, I was just a humble dude and I just did what I wanted to do and accomplished it. But I had a couple leaders um, once I got to the Marshal Service that was like, dude, you need to speak up more. Huh. You know, dude, you need to speak up more. Like you have something to say, just speak up more. And I'm just, you know, it, it took me a while. But eventually, I, you know, I started. Um, so to be honest with you, Mm -hmm. I, um, I started real bad when I was a kid. Like mm. it was a lot, it was a lot of trauma in my life when I was a kid. And like, I couldn't even barely get a sentence out without stuttering. So there were times when I could feel it before I started talking. So I just wouldn't say anything. And then, so I just oh. resorted to that, you know? So I was always that decent leader, but kind of like in the background, you know, lead by example type of guy. But Marshal Service kind of helped me with this. And then when I started um, the, the marriage group, I started being forced. And then Men's Alliance, <laughs> charity on the top, dude. <laughs> charity top. I'm sitting here in front of this fire and all these dudes looking at me. And I'm just like, it's flowing. No stutter, no nothing. Just flowing. I'm just like, thank you for the Holy Spirit, man. You know, to God be the glory. <laughs> wow, that is yeah. incredible, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's amazing what other guys are going through mm -hmm. that we don't know about. Right. You yeah. know, and, um, you know, I look at you, especially as you kind of gave your, your background and your bio there. I look at you and I'm like, man, this is, this is a guy that's like tremendous leader, uh, probably just has no problems and just crushes it all the time. And, and, and men follow him easily. Right. And it's easy for me to focus on, you know, my, my problems and just assume that you've got it all together. And then when you start sharing that, right, that's just a reminder, like guys, like no matter what you think of, yeah. uh, the guys around the fire with you or leaders you have at work, man, everybody's got their, everybody's got their issues, their background, their demons yeah. that they've had to fight. Yeah. Yeah. It was funny listening to what you were saying kind of reminded me of myself a little bit when you were. You kept getting told you need to share more. You need to share more. Yeah. Uh, going through patch class, uh, we get feedback from our fellow uh, guys that we go through. And most of them said, I wish you would share more. You need to talk more. Yeah. You know, I feel like you have something to share because I've always crack a joke, you know, but I wouldn't get real serious um, mm. around the fire because coming from a tactical background, as well, yeah. you uh, guys in that field tend to just be quiet. You know, that's why we get referred to as the quiet professionals, you know, because it's just being the strong, silent type. So I could definitely relate to, uh, to your, you know, similar experience. And yeah, Men's Alliance will bring it out of you for sure. Oh, yeah. I think that we live in, um, you know, we live in a culture that really um, holds up high um, humbleness, yeah. right? And you, you think about like watching a movie, if you're watching a movie and somebody's, um, really cocky, like overconfident, really overconfident, borderline cocky. Um, that's always the, the guy in the movie, uh, that we don't like, right? right. It's always the bad guy. It's always the, the opposition. And then the good guy, the hero is always very humble and he undersells and he over delivers. And that's just like this cultural norm that we have. And it's not like that everywhere. But I think because of that, and just, you know, if you grew up in America, um, in kind of a typical watching American movies and, and having typical American heroes kind of environment, if you're going to err one way or the other, you're going to err on the side of being quieter and and not being too outspoken or too sure of yourself yeah or too too overconfident because you don't want people to think that you're cocky yeah. and so because of this i mean when i see guys who have tremendous leadership potential but 
I don't really think that they are living up to their own potential. It's always in this direction, right? Mm. Yeah. I, I haven't yeah. I haven't got like a, a ton of guys in men's alliance, a ton of leaders in men's alliance who I am thinking this guy needs to tone it down more. This guy needs to be a little more quiet. This guy needs to be a little less confident and sure of himself. Man, that's not the problem. That's not right. the case. The problem is the opposite. The problem is like what you were saying, Shadow, what you're saying, Breach. There are tremendous leaders all over Men's Alliance yes. that I feel need to talk more, Yeah, True. need to share more, need to speak up more, be a little more confident, be a little more bold. And, and, you know, kind of step into that leadership position that we're also kind of hesitant uh, to kind of like stay kind of off in the in the background. But really, like you think about it, there's so many times in our life that we need to step up. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever feel um, since you joined Men's Alliance that nobody can relate to you? Maybe that's why you were maybe not sharing, because I feel like that was one of my reasons, because like. You know, you hear guys like talk, they're not going to know, they about, wouldn't understand. Yeah, like or talking about their bad day at work because they couldn't get a project done or whatever. It's like a bad day at work for us or a good day for work at us is that nobody died. You know, right. Yeah. <laughs> so or you don't like, leave the range with extra holes. You know? Right, right, right. <laughs> so it's almost like, you know, what can I share that it just doesn't for one, make me sound melodramatic or, you know, and two, yes. just feel you know, that I can relate to somebody else. Exactly. Yeah. Plenty of times, but, um, the, the part I like about it is now that I'm coming out of that, I know how to empathize and know what to say to those dudes who still haven't come out yet and not taking a stand and being courageous enough to just go ahead and speak, you know? Um, yeah. And, that's a good, uh, yeah, that's a good point. Empathize. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, right. learn how to empathize. I know how to say the right things, you know, just by observing and watching and seeing how they are yeah. and um, not pushing them too much. Uh, Cause that could be probably the worst thing you could do. Um, For sure. Yeah. You know, you kind of gravitate towards the leadership style of um, creating that personal connection yes. with, with the guys. And um I know like in the military, this is like such a fine line. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember one of the, one of the leadership principles I learned going through officer training, like I can just still hear the, the wording was know your men and look out for their welfare. Oh yeah. That you have to principle. know your men and look out for their welfare, get to know your men and look out for their welfare. Like I've just like heard that so much, know your men and look out for their welfare. And, um, you know, I can remember like watching, whether it's Band of Brothers or some other, you know, war movie uh, with like my sons. And you see those moments where like where a leader is like walking up and down his his troops. Maybe they've been in combat. Maybe they've yeah. been and, and they've all kind of like in this moment where they've got a break and there's a rest. Maybe they're all kind of sitting around smoking or eating or just mm -hmm. something and you see the leader walk by and if the leader says something like hey you need to uh you need to put on some dry socks yeah yeah right like i will like pause that when my boys were young i'd pause that moment and look at him and be like that right there that little seemingly insignificant line that's what good leadership looks like yeah yes right like you realize everybody else in this scene sitting around is thinking about themselves they're eating a candy yeah. bar. They're smoking a cigarette. That guy, that leader, he was thinking about his men's feet. Right. 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 And that's what a leader does. So I think like what you're talking about of creating this connection and getting to know your men, tremendously valuable. You can't lead from like some aloof, no. you know, position of, uh, you know, they don't really know you. And uh, they're just like, I don't know this guy. <laughs> just, you know, he told me to do this. I guess yeah. I'm supposed to do it. Right. Yeah. All unapproachable. You know, I, I just, I don't ever want to be that guy. You know, I want to be able to, you know, the one thing I normally do to throw guys off, you know, I'd come in and I just would ask them, you know, okay, how'd you sleep last night? Oh yeah. Totally, totally throw them off. You know, they, they would not <laughs> expect that, you know, but actually it tells me a lot about what you say and actually how you respond, you know? Oh um, yeah. You know, and then we just, you know, we'll just go from there. And then just, 
okay, then walk away, you know, type thing. And then eventually, I don't know, my dad used to always tell me, man, you're always being watched. You know, you're always being watched. And I uh, never really understood that until I be <laughs> knowingly became a, a, a leader. <laughs> yeah. It's you know? so true. It's yeah. it's absolutely true. We are always being watched. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just, mm -hmm. you, you talking about, um, how'd you, how'd you sleep? How's your day? Yeah. Those questions, man, that just, you just instantly reminded me of, um, flying and being in the cockpit <laughs> and it was always so important you need to know if you're yes. flying with a guy, you really need to know if he has a newborn baby at home. Right. You Where need to know at. if he's going through a divorce. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you are flying with a guy and you don't know him, you haven't taken the time to ask him questions. Hey, how are things going? How are, how are things at home? What's life like for you? Guys are like, man, it's pretty rough right now. I got, you know, twin two year olds and, or my wife just left me or something like that. You better, you better get to know where your buddies, your battle buddies, your wingman is at so yeah. that you can help look out for each other. Right. Cause at the end of the day, he's going to be, uh, or, or she will be, uh, you know, right. have your six, you know? So, uh, yeah, it's important. So I think it's what we're really hitting on here is a very important leadership lesson is get to know your people. Yeah. Right. And, and, you don't get to know, by the way, unless you share a little bit too. Right. Exactly. Right. You got to tell them how you're doing. Yep. And man, I slept bad last night. You know, <laughs> neighbor's dog kept me up. Might need you to double check my math today. I might be a little off my game. How are you doing? You know, you kind of open the door as the leader and you set the tone with, are we being real here? Are right. we going to be real with each other? Or are we both going to pretend that everything's fine? So yeah. you go first, you share about yourself and then you ask them how they're doing. And I don't think you can be a good leader without that. That's real. That's real talk. I think for me, um, going first and, uh, sharing, you know, what I got going on also allows me to be able to, you know, like be vulnerable right. you know, to be vulnerable. And, uh, I think I've learned over time. That's, there's strength in that, um, yeah. you know, allows myself to make mistakes, which, you know, up until recently, I, I thought I wasn't even allowed to make mistakes, especially oh, in yeah, front of my right. dudes, you know? Right. And so when I would talk about my little shortcomings or talk about my mistakes, man, that door just flies open with the troop state. Yeah. They feel comfortable. It's hard to follow somebody that you think is perfect because right. it become, they become unattainable, you know, like... I could never be that way, you know, so what's the point? Yep. I like to call it putting some skin in the game. You know, if you don't okay. put any skin in the game uh, when you're when you're leading and you don't become vulnerable, it's like how can you expect somebody else to share and be vulnerable with you, you know? I like that. Yeah. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> put some skin in the game. Yeah. So one of the things you said was as you were talking about improving yourself as a leader, and it, you know, you had some, some mentors, some, some bosses point out to you, Hey, you need to talk more. You need to speak up more. So you mentioned you started working on this and you, you said that you read some, tell me yes. about that. What, what was that? I'm reading right now, extreme ownership, man. Oof. Oh yeah. And it's, 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 uh, it's hitting me all over the place. You know, there's, there's no bad teams. There's only bad leaders. Uh, mm. um, <laughs> Let me see what else. Um, that, by the way, extreme ownership. Uh, this is on the Men's Alliance reading list. Yeah. Right. So this this is one of our this is one of our books. It's an incredible book on leadership. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so so I've also read Twenty One Rules, Twenty One Irrefutable yeah. Rules of Leadership. Yeah. And that's where I learned about John the Maxwell. law. Of the, yeah. And about law of the lid, and you know where the leader is on his leadership ability and, you know, and how you'll probably, you'll actually like put a lid on or put the top on or put the seal on where your troops and how much they'll be able to grow. I'm obviously summarizing, but yeah. um, yeah, 21 irrefutable. Then also the 365 degree leader, which is kind of those junior leaders who okay. you know, kind of leads up and leads down and um, a lot of information, but, you know, I always ask God to like, 
show me how to apply this knowledge, you know, type deal. Yeah. And, um, you know, so far, so good. I'm, I'm grateful. Man, that's, that's awesome. So I think, you know, you're just highlighting the fact that um, leadership is both an art and a science. Yes. And there's an art to it. And there's this aspect of, you know, you hear the phrase natural born leader. Yeah. And that's, that's true to a certain extent. Yeah. Right. But then there's also the science to it, the learned sure. part, the studying yeah. part, the improving. There are some formulas. There are some clear cut objective ways to be a bad leader. Hmm. And yes. part of being a good leader is knowing how to avoid being a bad leader. Right. Yes. So if you know, like, don't do this, don't do that. Right. Like we've named a couple here. Right. Don't pretend you've got it all together. Yeah. Don't pretend you don't make mistakes. Um, one of the worst things a leader can ever do is after they've made a mistake, not own it. Yeah. Right. And we've talked about this from some band of brother stuff where some leaders yeah. they clearly screw up and then they try to like brush it off or blame somebody else or make an excuse. And it's like, instantly your stock as right. a leader starts to decline right so there's this whole list of things or be aloof not get to know your people so there's there is kind of that science to it so if you know like okay these are some clear qualities of a bad leader if i want to be a good leader one of the most important things i got to do is avoid these things yeah right and then like yeah. you you've done a lot of work man you, you you've done a lot of reading yeah and i think yeah. that's a that's a that's an important part so natural born leadership can can only take you so far yeah true and That's true and then even if you don't have that even if you are absolutely not a natural born leader uh you can lean heavy into study and improve and probably become um a better leader than the majority of leaders out there even without the mm -hmm. natural ability man you were you were stuttering yeah <laughs> And I got into a lot of fights, I'm telling you, because people would, you know, would make fun, you know, and just, you know, or like it took so long to get my words out and then making a face like, oh, you, know, you know, so yeah, I resulted to just, just you punching know, them in the face. Yes, just make that. If I can't right talk, hand. if I can't talk, you ain't going to be able to talk either. Exactly. That? Exactly. Yeah. So then you say, say something. Okay. I didn't think so. Right. Yeah. It's like, you know me. Yeah. <laughs> <Shadow>. Right. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. got you, man. Yeah. yeah, but I'm delivered, man. I'm delivered, and to God be the glory, you know? Yeah. You yeah, know? I think sometimes uh, it takes some of the pressure off of yes. trying to figure out how to bite become, you know, what, what would a good leader do? It takes some of the pressure off of just don't do what a bad leader would do, you know? Right. If you yeah. just do the opposite, you don't have to have all the answers. It's just like, you know, how would a bad leader handle this situation? Okay, I'm going to do the opposite. The opposite. Yeah. 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 I think if you're if you're real about yourself and you're authentic with your own mistakes and shortcomings and you're comfortable with guys growing as leaders around you. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. if you're comfortable with your men stepping up and leading and and displaying their areas of expertise and you're not like jealous of that and trying to keep yeah. people around you down. Um you're off to an incredible start right there. And so this, this scene that you kind of talked about in episode three, shadow and I were actually watching that just this morning, right yeah. before you called in, we were watching that exact scene where winters walks up to the other officer and is like, yeah, this is an example of officers uh, who, who have, you know, just lost their training and yeah. they're just out there screwing up. Um, and you think about one of, one of our, um, values in men's alliance is feedback we yeah, we right. value feedback a lot because nobody grows without it in the air force every single flight whether it was a combat mission or a training mission every flight has a debrief after it oh yeah and you go around and you you pick it apart yeah you know and you don't even start at the flight you start your debrief talking about the mission planning the day before the flight, you know, Hey, you know, I noticed you, you showed up late to mission planning. You didn't have the weather brief and the guy's like, yeah, I know I screwed up. You know, I had this yeah. going on and it's like, boy, you, you pick apart everything so that your next flight is better. And so that scene in episode three, he's, he's 
that's feedback. Yeah. 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 You it's know? Hard, it's right. hard to take sometimes too. Very much so. Cause it's, uh, you know, every, you don't learn anything when someone tells you how great you are or how great Absolutely. you did, you know, you, uh, all the time, you know, mm. I think you learn when someone gives you, you know, corrective or, you know, constructive criticism. So if somebody's telling you how great you did all the time. He's like, well, maybe that just, that person tells everybody they're great. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's like, right. You don't yeah. learn from that. Like, yeah. like you breach, you know, you learned and grew as a leader from having some mentors tell you a thing that you needed to improve on. Yeah. Speaking right. of more. <laughs> as good as it, yeah. As good as it feels, you know, to tell, you know, to hear, you know, that you did something great. You still don't really learn much, you know? All right. So I'm going to bring us back to the show here. What, okay. what other examples do you have of good or bad leadership from, uh, from these two episodes? I really, I really liked when captain winners, um, saw his troop, um, I think it's private Blythe when he yeah. was having that issue in, um, episode yeah. three and he just thought he was blind and he just totally, we, you know, in my arena, you know, he went cold black. He was just yeah. not useful at all. And, um, captain winners just came down to his level, you know, and showed humility and was just, I was so happy. I watched this episode, dude. I'm just telling you, I'm just, that's what I'm talking about, you know, because, right. you know, like God, you know, he, he left the 99 It went to that, that, that single, you know, and this, that was just the best yeah. part of my show right there. <laughs> you yeah. know, showed humility and just took care of that dude, met him where he was and showed some humidity, uh, humility. And by the end of the show, that dude, you know, stepped up and, um, and was one of the boys, you know? Um, so this scene, uh, for you guys listening to this, this scene that Breach is describing, it's, uh, it's like in a house, they've just, uh, they've just taken the town of Carentan yeah. and, um, and there's kind of like a, um, a medic facility, a little field hospital set up in a house in this town. And there's this guy in there, uh, Blythe, I yep. think he's a private Blythe is in there and he's sitting on the floor and he's like total shell shock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like completely traumatized. And, um, and I love what you're describing. I love how winters, the captain here, he's not angry at him. He's not, um, ignoring him and just like, whatever, you know, I think about this scene and you can, I, I can't imagine the stress I would be in, in that moment as winters. <laughs> right it would be very easy to just look at him and just walk out. Right. Whatever. I don't know what's going on with this guy, but I got like a hundred other guys that I need to be focusing on and figuring out what's next and getting guys, you know, wounded guys, the treatment they need and getting people, their ammunition, getting people fed. And, you right. know, he's, he's got a million worries on his plate at that moment, but he, he stops and he, he uh, gets down on the ground by this guy sitting there and the guy's gone blind. So that's the scene here. The guy cannot see anything and he, and nobody knows why he's like, I've just, the whole world went black. Like I can't see. And, um, <laughs> have you ever seen, have either of you guys ever seen the, um, the old classic movie Patton Yes. with George C. Scott yeah. playing general Ooh. Patton? Yeah, no, I don't so, think so. So there is a scene. <laughs> tell me if you remember this shadow. There is a scene in Patton that is the exact antithesis of what? this scene with winters. Wow. There is, he's, he's talking to the kid in the hospital. Yes. Yeah. So there is a scene in Patton and I, I don't know. It's probably, it's probably fairly historically accurate. I would imagine probably. that they based this scene off of a real story that was floating around about Patton that I, he was, I believe he, was he lost command over. It. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, you're right. Yeah. He goes yeah. into this field hospital and uh, this is during World this War II. This is the way a Marine would handle the situation. Yeah. <laughs> a Marine in the 40s. Right. No, even probably today. Probably through the, no, probably through like maybe yeah. the 70s to 80s, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And, um, and so he goes in there and this is, you know, they, they've called, they've called PTSD a lot of different things yeah. through the years, right? And um, one of the things that's been called is shell shock. Right. And, yeah. um it was called battlefield fatigue. It's, it's gone by a lot of names, but this guy is clearly PTSD shell shock. Mm -hmm. And Patton goes up to him because everybody else in this field hospital has a lot of bandages on or they're right. missing arms and they're missing legs. And he goes yeah. up to this one guy and he's like, what's wrong with you? 
and the guy's like, he can barely talk. And he's like, I don't, I don't know, sir. I just, I, 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 I you know, I just can't, I just can't go on anymore. And, and Patton just he sl- slaps him. Yeah. He slaps him across the <laughs> face. This is the exact opposite of Winters from Band of Brothers, right? right. right. He just starts slapping this guy across the face. Dang. And he's like, he, he tells him, like, I want you out of this hospital. Get back to work. Yeah, you're in here stinking up this hospital where, where brave men yeah. have real wounds. Yeah. And, and you need to get the heck out of here. Yeah. And, you, <laughs> and you, com- you contrast that with episode three of Band yeah. of Brothers, and you got Captain Winters yeah. taking the time to kneel down and talk with this guy. And he's like, tell me what's going on. The guy's like, I can't see. And he's like, man, you know, I hate that for you. Hang in there. Yeah. It'll yeah. be okay. Right. Yeah. No, but honestly, that's like, that's one of the, I think, differences between like how the, in that scene, not all army, but in that case, and not all Marine, of course. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, yeah, there's, there's some great Marine leaders and some terrible. Generally, the mentality of a a Marine, at least in the infantry, is you're not out of the fight until you're dead. You know, like, get back, get back in there, you know, buckle up, don't, you know, take a mo there's no emotions, there's no feeling. Right. You're a war machine. Get the job done, you know. And sometimes that mentality does ha- you know, help you get through stuff. That's a short term right. mentality. One hundred percent. Yeah. For when you're yeah. taking fire, not right, right, at right. the hospital. Yeah. After right, the battle. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. that's generally how it's, you know, perceived and dealt with, in my experience. Hey guys, do you have questions about insurance? Maybe you know you need it. Maybe you're not sure if you have enough. Well, I'm going to tell you who to call. Robert Kelly, call sign Risk from Ignite Tribe. Risk is an independent insurance agent with OnTrack Insurance, and he can help you answer all your questions. He can get you auto, home, health, dental, uh, life insurance. If you own a business, he can handle um, business insurance, workers' comp, liability, all types of insurance. So I'm going to give you Risk Home phone number. You want the cell number of your insurance agent. That's the kind of service you get from risk. 804-931-6646. Again, 804-931-6646. Call him with any questions you have about insurance. He's your guy. This leadership example by uh, Winters with the the guy Blythe that's lost his eyesight. Have you ever seen, Breach, have you ever seen any examples in, in your career's of of leaders doing something similar to this uh that show humility yeah kind of like show like getting down on this guy's level and yeah and and being in it with him and encouragement yeah um i would say i've I've seen it things similar a couple times uh and it was probably one of the uh the leaders that i kind of looked up to um, and he, you know, I'm not gonna lie. It was, um, he was a pastor at another church and, but he was also in the military and he was a PT stud and all that stuff. And, um, you know, I kind of went to him, I was already going to him for like some scripture stuff, but then on the other part of my life, I was getting prepared for SWAT school and, and whatever. And he was kind of down on myself and he being up here, like, I mean, top dog he he came down to my level and like was able to explain things the way i needed to to be explained and it just kind of you know even from just breathing you know just get your tempo you know get a tempo going and it and uh you know you know just right just talk about your cadence he 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 broke it all the way down to the simplest form for me that um was able to me to you know be able to you know, build up, you know, to build up when it came to firearms, same thing, you know, this guy, you know, would, you know, would just, he told me, it's like the ability to be able to do the same thing over and over and over again. Don't skip corners. Ah, the light came out, you know, or the light came on, you know, and all that. So yeah, I had several leaders. It's tough for me to pick her out, pick out one or, you know, yeah. but, but there was a lot. Mm. Yeah. I think there's something really good to be said there for this leadership quality here of investing in your men individually, right? One-on-one caring about each one of them and not just being so focused on the big picture that we forget 
right. that, you know, the mission doesn't get accomplished without the men. Yeah. Right. You got to put the men, um, and, and, you know, this is applicable, I think, you know, to your family, right. You know, yeah. sometimes as Definitely. dads, we can get pretty focused on the mission at home and it's like, dude, your kid went through something rough today at school. Yeah. You need to stop and get down on his level and be the, the captain winters in this moment. Cause whatever he's going through, it might seem, might seem silly and insignificant to us as adults, but it's, it's the biggest deal that he's ever gone through in his life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, that's I true. think you, you have to um, adapt your leadership style to who you're leading. You know, you can't be the same type of leader to everybody because some people respond to strong leadership. Some people respond to more. Let me come beside you and hold your hand. And that's a really good yeah. point. You know, yes, it and is. even even with your kids, you know, it's like you may discipline one different than the other, or you may, you know, (laughs) approach one different than the other because they're not the same, you know? Yeah. Um, Learn that the hard way. (laughs) Right. Like daddy, why did you do this to her and not to me? It's like, (laughs) because she responds different or he responds different, you know? So So I think a leader, you have to recognize that by knowing your, you know, subordinate individually, you need to know how they respond to what kind of leadership, like how should I approach this person for this issue? I can't approach him the same way as I approach her or him. Yeah, you know, and you only great. you only learn that by getting to know your men, getting yeah. to know your your men and women around you, underneath you and above you. That's really 100%. good. Yeah. Um, episode four, episode four has um, always been one of my favorites, um, because I really like the character Bull. Yes, uh, yes. I love the character <laughs> Bull. He's great. Yeah, and always and has a cigar. He's always house. chewing on an unlit cigar, <laughs> and he's a big guy. He, he's yeah. he's a little husky, yeah. And he's always chewing on a cigar, and I could always relate to him. Yeah. I was always like, one hundred percent. That's my dude. Yeah, he's my spirit <laughs> animal. My spirit animal. I was just gonna say the same thing. <laughs> like, like I'm not gonna pretend I'm a Captain Winters, but I can aspire to try to be a bull. Yep, I know and, that's uh, right. And Bull's a good leader at his level, right? You know, oh, yeah. he's he's not. He, he doesn't have the title. He's not an officer. He's not like um, on charge, in charge on paper, uh, but everybody looks up to him. Yes. And whatever he, whatever he uh, says to guys has a huge impact on him. He's, he's a man of influence. Right. Yep. So if he, if he offers encouragement, man, that's a big deal, you know? And if he offers a little bit of a, of a reprimand that goes a long way because he yeah. carries that because of who he is. So here in episode four, we got bull um bull gets injured yeah and he's he's missing yes and and that's like one of kind of the central points is they've just had this huge uh firefight this huge battle and they're all regrouping afterwards and and everybody's like where's bull right Yeah. yeah so to that right there i have a perfect example that i experienced in my life it's a very similar situation um not in combat it was um it was it, yeah, it was in SWAT school. We were probably about halfway through. And uh, my buddy and I, we were both kind of like leading the way. You know, he he, he was a PT stud, um, you know, uh, firearms, everything, you name it. He was a beast. And I was like following up behind him. But anyway, nonetheless, we get to this op- this um, event where we had to go into this house that was like full of smoke. And we had to go th- crawl through like a hamster. And we had this tank on or whatever. But anyway, so... Up until this point, everybody kind of Sounds leaned. awesome. Yeah. No, no way. No. Like, I, 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 you know, I was able to confidently go through everything, you know. But this right here showed me that uh, I got a newfound respect for these firearms. I mean, uh, fire, um, firefighters oh, doing yeah. this. Yeah, I know my place. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I've learned my place quick. But uh, anyway, up until this point, everybody always leaned on this guy, you know, like, like they did Bull, you know. He had influence, and they always leaned on him. You know, they always looked to see what he was going to say or what he was going to do. But anyway, this the the instructors, when it was time for him to go inside this house, he got hurt. OK. And it was a lesson that they were trying to teach us. So he ends up like taking forever, taking forever. And everybody's wondering, getting nervous, like, why? Where where is so and so? You know, and everybody's getting a little nervous. Next thing you know, the instructors bring him out and he's like they had to carry him. And he's like, oh, this snot and stuff. And he's just like, oh, man, this is bad, you know. And they took him, you know, wherever. 
and everybody's like, so now what are we going to do? You know? And just like in that movie, um, in part four, those dudes, you know, they looked after, I mean, you know, they had their moment where they were like, where's bull, where's bull. But they manned up, they went after him, yeah. you know, and they, and they, and they, you know, and they went on the mission to go find them. And that was, that was huge. But I'm sure at a the time they were like, now what? Like, now yeah. what are we going to do? You know, but they, and the same thing what we did, you know, we eventually ended up learning what the whole point was, you know, you, you can't just lean on one guy. You got to be able to have your own confidence and push through. But, uh, but yeah, I, those I were good part. instructors you had. They recognized yeah. that you guys were all kind of leaning on this guy yeah. as your stud. It makes me think about, you know, like um, playing a sport yes. and you got like this one star on the team and then mm -hmm. that guy goes down, that guy's injured. Right. <laughs> You go through that moment of like, everybody's like, Oh crap. And then everybody better rise to the occasion. Yeah. It's time for, yeah. it's time for some, uh, in the absence of leadership, some best supporting take charge, take charge lead by lead example. By example. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It's time for, to go from a supporting role to the main role. You better, you better yeah. step it up now. Yeah. That's right. I love that line in our creed too. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> so you got these guys, they go in and they go back into this town and they're, they're searching for him. Yeah. Uh, which I think is a great leadership lesson right there of, you know, we just, we don't leave our no, brothers right. behind. No man left behind. We're, we're going back. Yeah. Um, and nobody wants to go back. I mean, that right. town is, that town is now full of Nazis. Yes. You know, so forth. It's like, man, we just got out of there and we're barely alive. Yeah. And then they're like, Hey, they pick a couple guys and they're like, go look for them. Yeah. yeah. One of, one of my other th things that I love about episode four is, it shows bull and where he's at. And so he's, he's holed up in a barn. Yeah. Yes. And so oh, he got right. wounded. I think he got like mm -hmm. shot in the butt yeah. or something. <laughs> and, um, and when he kind of regains consciousness or whatnot, he realizes he's, he, everybody's left him. Yeah. Yeah. He's everybody, his whole unit's gone. He's behind enemy lines and he's hiding in a barn. So that's the scenario. But the thing I love about this is what he does. Oh, yeah. while he's alone so you think about this like what you would be feeling and what you'd be thinking if you're that guy but the thing bull does is he he never stops um doing exactly what he would do if right. everybody were still around him like yeah. he doesn't change who he is or what he's doing he doesn't try to hide or run from the battle or you know um, take this opportunity to, uh, right. to, um, work on his personal safety. Right. He's like in there getting ready to fight him. Yep. He reverts yep. to his training. He exactly. goes back to his training and he's like, yeah. he, he he's not doing anything different. He's like, okay, now I'm going to fight the Nazis by myself <laughs> in this barn. Yeah. <laughs> right. If that's, if that's where I am, then that's what I'm going to keep doing. So I think there's this like integrity thing going of right he's the same guy he was when he was with his platoon and he's going to be the exact same guy when he's separated from him and isolated from him he doesn't change doesn't he uh doesn't he he gets spotted by a, a, so, a german soldier doesn't he yeah some people come in the barn and one guy looks at him and they kind of just stare at each other if i'm remembering this right and the soldier just turns around and walks away. He's like, I no, you're not to... remembering. Is, is that not it? No. Uh, oh. But there's a family that it gets complicated yes. because there's like a there, man. Isn't there something civilians, like civilians, civilians yeah. come into the barn. Yep. So I think that's what you're thinking is like okay. the civilian interchange. Okay. And then the Nazi comes into the barn and they don't. And, and um, he kind of, he attacks and fights oh, that's and right. kills this Nazi. Yeah. Hand but he can't combat. shoot though. But, but he, he can't, can't shoot. Right, yeah, yeah. He, he can't yeah. fire. He doesn't draw yeah. attention to himself. And he does so he does all this uh in such a way as to protect that what is yeah. probably like a girl and her dad. Yeah. Yep. You know, who are in there. And he could have just kind of stayed hidden back in the shadows. Right. And let that Nazi find that girl and her dad. Yeah. Right. You know, and he's not in there just hiding, trying to avoid the fight. Right. Nope. You know, and I think that eye contact thing you're talking about is, I think it's like with the girl. Okay. You yeah. know, like that girl is in there hiding too. And she's mm -hmm. like realizing, oh crap, I'm about to get found right. yeah. by this Nazi. And then Bull steps up and, okay. and fights him. So you've got this whole leadership dynamic of uh, keep leading 
even when there's no one around. Yeah. Even when no one's around. Yeah. I mean, is, it speaks to the point that you don't have to have rank, you know, rank position or authority to be a leader. You know, totally. It's like, because yeah. from where he didn't have any men under him. Right. You know, but all of his peers looked up to him yep. as a leader and kind of revered him and wanted to be like him. You know, so you don't have to wait till you get this position or this authority to do what you know is right and lead the people around you. Just do it now. And that's so, yeah. that's so good. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like thinking as you're saying that, like if you're like a guy listening to this and you're not the tribe leader yeah, right, and you're not the workout chief or devotion chief. And if you're thinking to yourself, Oh, if I were if the I tribe was, leader, I would do it this way. When right. I'm the devotion chief, yeah. I'll do, dude, do Just that do thing it. now. Yeah. Whatever it is you're thinking that you're going to do one day when you get the title. Yeah. Why on earth would you wait? Just do that thing now because good leaders, your tribe leader, right. he would love for you to do something. Yeah. A good one. Yeah. That's A right. So just step up and do the thing. Don't wait till you got the title. Right. Yeah. Right. Amen. So good. I, I remember reading uh, one of the books and it talked about the leader not feeling um, like shaded or or kind of uh insecure if one of your troops you know have ideas or kind of as a leader in their own way you yeah. should never feel bad about that you should actually encourage it because you're actually empowering them and that was a lesson that kind of helped me out when i started leading that small unit you know i had some dudes one dude was a captain in the army and another dude was a navy special warfare and i'm just like <laughs> You know, but but after reading that and and um, I was able to apply it and, uh, you know, empower them and just encourage them. Yeah, we go up, we go up, go up. Yeah. And it was that's just... right. You, mean, you just said it. Those two words empower them yeah. and encourage them. Yes. And you think about that. If you're doing that, if you're doing those two things, then you can be a great leader yeah. of a team that every single person on that team is better than you. Yeah. They can be yeah. better. They can be faster, stronger, smarter, more experienced, more natural talent, everything. And you can still be an yep. amazing leader of that team if you empower them and you encourage them. Yeah. Right on. You don't right have on. to be, you know, one of the things we say all the time is you don't have to be the most spiritual to be the devotion chief. Right. You don't have to be the most physically fit to be the workout chief. Like that, those yeah. it's leadership is not about those things. Yeah. And so I love your empower and encourage. Yeah. It's like those positions aren't things that are given for guys that have already attained those things. They're almost positions yeah. that you're given to live up to, yeah. you know? Yeah. I like it's that. Like, but, uh, you know, one um, scenario when I was, if I, at my tribe and guys would get call signs, I was like, I would, I would say to myself, if I was the uh, tribe leader, I'd pray over every guy after he got his call sign, you know? And then I was like, I'm just going to do it. You know, it's like, yeah. So I was yeah. like, I don't need to wait till I'm it's a like, tribe leader. Yeah. You know? So I was like, Hey guys, let's all circle around this guy and uh, welcome him into the family with a prayer. Mm -hmm. you love know? that. I so, like that. Yeah. yeah. Great and example. One of my tribe leaders was like, man, Shadow, you you uh, made me feel like, I was like, no, let's just start <laughs> doing that. Let's make that a thing, you know? And uh, yeah. of course it was, who would say, that's a stupid idea. I can't wait till I get title so I can say my good ideas out loud. Right? Exactly. It's like, how crazy is it? It's like, it's a win-win. Nobody's going to tell me that prayer is a bad Yeah, thing. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is such a great leadership lesson is that a good leader grows other good leaders. Amen. Yeah. Uh, you, yes. If you're a leader, you should be growing other leaders around you. And this comes back to something you mentioned earlier from Maxwell's book. Um, about the lid, right? And so I'm just going to flat out throw this out there because uh, there's no way to sugarcoat this. If you, <laughs> as a boss mm -hmm. or a tribe leader or a pastor, if you think that, man, there's no good leaders in my team. There are no good leaders in my <laughs> tribe. There are no good leaders in my uh, church, I have bad news for you. Right. You're not one either. <laughs> if you were a good leader, right, you would have good leaders around you following you. And I feel like a lot of people give this away and they don't realize that when you hear a guy say, 
I wish somebody around here would do something. I wish somebody would, would lead around here. I wish somebody yeah. would step up and, and, uh, you know, take charge or just think on their own. I'm like, uh, maybe that's because you're not empowering them to right. or yeah. encouraging them to, because part of this leadership principle and Maxwell talks about this a lot is a good leader will not follow a bad leader for long. Right. Yeah, that's and, true. And they they will go away. Yeah, they're going to just drift away and they're going to go find a good leader to follow. And so um I guess like I got I've constantly got um the idea coming to my mind of churches and congregations when you see like a church that's full of good leaders. Yeah. And lots of people are starting and leading lots of things. Yeah. That to me is an indicator that that pastor or that leadership at that church empowers people and encourages people and is a good leader themselves. True. Yeah. Otherwise the good leaders in that congregation would would see it and smell it and yeah. and they'd go elsewhere. Yeah. Not smell right. It. So <laughs> we can't keep a lid Right. But we also can use it as a way to kind of mm, some yeah. self-awareness. How are we doing as leaders? It's about, uh, it's about taking ownership. You know, you there call something is. your church, this is my church. Then <laughs> do something that shows it's your church. If somebody spills their coffee. Don't like, just look and oh, the janitor. Will somebody clean should up. clean that up. Yeah. Go get some paper towels and help clean it up. Or as you yeah. walk in the door, all right, you guys go find seats, family. I'm going to wait here and welcome people as they come in you know like you don't have to be on the team on a team to do that like just do it i'm gonna go help yeah. people find seats you know take ownership of your church or whatever environment you're in you know take if you're calling it my church well if it's your church do something to show it's yours you know act like it's yours act yeah. like you own it right same thing with your tribe same right. thing with your family yeah exactly one of my favorite leadership books i know i've talked about it a few times on the podcast is called um how to lead when you're not in charge right by clay scroggins and um and and is so many good principles and truths in there about and of course being in charge he's referring to having that title right. having that position and this is to you know a lot of the points you've made shadow is you can be an incredible leader without the title Yes, just I step that. up and do the thing you know needs to be done, yeah. and and either one of two things is going to happen: either you have a good leader in charge above you who is going to empower you and encourage you, or you have a weak leader who is in charge of you and they're going to feel threatened by you, and they are going to do things. They're going to put hurdles and obstacles in front of you to slow you down and prevent you from making progress that they feel would make them look bad. And if that's the situation you find yourself in, you need to, leave. You need to go somewhere. You need else. to leave. Yeah, definitely. That's the only, really the only solution. That's that right. I you're not going to change them. You, you're going to waste your time and expend your own. Yeah. It'll, eventually, it'll eventually cripple you. Yeah. Okay. It's like, I just can't thrive here. Like, you know, right. I think it's just very depressing. At least it was for me. It's like, I got to go. Definitely. All right, Breach. Back to you and episode four. Um, <laughs> uh, is there anything else that you saw that you want to mention here that we haven't touched on or have we covered it? I think we, we covered it. Uh, you know, Bull, he was a man, you know. Um, then the troops went after him. Um, yeah. I think we covered it. Yeah. yeah you know, episode, episode four. four, it's called The Replacements. That's the yes. title of that episode. Yeah. And it's got this whole theme going of the oh, yeah. easy company has new guys in it that weren't with them on D-Day. That's right. And uh, as I was, I was reading about episode four, and I was just thinking about Men's Alliance tribes, I've seen this dynamic. Yeah. where you've got kind of your OGs right they yeah. have been they've been doing MA for a long time and then you got the new guys the replacements yeah. that they don't remember what it was like in some previous experience or story yeah and uh you know throughout episode 4 there's some of the old guys some of the veterans that they, they do not want to accept no the replacements yeah, but, but bull of all people he was looking out for a couple of them guys even hold your weapon like this or, yeah. you know, he, he would go over to him and, and say things throughout, 
So I yes, I remember that. And Bull, I love that. Yeah. Once again, Bull. <laughs> and at the hard. beginning, and at the beginning of the episode, they introduced Bull to the young guys, to the new guys. At, if you need anything, or if you need any, he's the one that no one knows more than him. That's that's the way they described him. He, he is the man, you know. Yeah. And then throughout, you know, he could have let his head get swole, but he's he's real. He's real. There's no fake. In the yeah. integrity like we've been speaking about and um and i liked how he would just he wouldn't come over and like tell him too much at one time he he would come up to him hold your weapon like this you know, yeah. or, or do this or when you make this jump <laughs> you're gonna break your leg if you you know so yeah yeah boom i really really admired him on that episode we've all had those moments where we're the replacement where we're the yeah. new guy yeah don't forget we've all had that moment from. and and when that when that <laughs> when that older veteran comes up to you and gives you that little piece of advice like that it's like it's like being handed a piece of gold yeah, yeah. right because you're like this guy i can trust this guy's looking out for me um and and he's you know i'm gonna listen to that i'm gonna do that i'm gonna follow this guy you think about the amount of leadership capital you earn instantly by walking up yeah. to the new guy and giving him a little tip to help him yeah. fit in instead of coming up and making some comment you know about him being the new guy. He he knows he's the new guy. He knows he yeah. doesn't know all the inside jokes and stories with you. And right. you can, I like to you call can, it. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. I like to call it putting change in the pocket for later. You know, mm. you know, yeah. I like that. Some walk, yeah, around, he, some walk around money. Yeah, 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 yeah. It works at home too with the missus, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, that's, Man, that's true. I remember yeah. just being the new guy at a, in my new company, I was put into a platoon that had just got back from a combat deployment, and I hadn't been to combat yet. You were the replacement. And I was, yeah. well, not only the replacement, I was a corporal given the position of the platoon, the, a staff sergeant. Mm -hmm. So that was like I guess, mm. two, two ranks above me. And yeah. so I'm in charge of all these guys until the staff sergeant shows up. Who knows when that's going to be? And... It was a uh, proving ground for sure, <laughs> and, cha and challenging. Yeah. yeah. So how that go, man? <laughs> didn't didn't go good. Okay, <laughs> but I, okay. I know from I know from hearing you tell the story before yeah. that you were given really good advice. Right. Yes, from a from a right. higher up guy yeah. saw a mistake you were making, and he told you, "Hey, yeah, do and do so, blank." Right. Yeah, and so I uh, I did what he said. I was like, "I'm going to bring these guys down." to my level instead of trying to be something that I'm not, you know, yeah. and just make them go at my pace and acknowledge the fact that I haven't been where you guys have been. I'm going to do my best. Acknowledge you know? the elephant in the room. Right. Say it yeah, out loud. Like, I don't think, yeah, I don't think I'm better than you or I know more than any of you. I'm like, I was thrown in this position and I'm going to do it to the best I can, you know, and eventually they all warmed up to me and right accepted on. me in, but it was definitely, um, they put me through some tests to see how I would react. So, mm. but yeah, you imagine if uh, if Captain Winters and Banner Brothers, imagine if he had taken one of those replacements and yeah. put him in charge of something. Right. Yeah. He the yeah. the best <laughs> thing that that replacement could do in that moment is acknowledge the elephant in the room. Right. That better right. be the first thing you say is, "Hey guys, I know I'm new here. I know I don't have the experience of you guys." So. I really appreciate any good tips or wisdom or advice that you have for me. I'm all yeah. ears. Yeah. Now here's what we're going to do. Right. 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 <laughs> and I think that's when they opened up to me was when they're like, okay, he doesn't think yeah. he's all that, you know, yeah. he doesn't think he's, you know, cause we all know I haven't, you know, I really haven't done anything yet. You guys have done more than me. So I'm going to be coming to you guys for questions and experience. And I'm just the guy who has to report to the guy above me basically. Right. You know? Yeah. So, well, odds breach, are already man. stacked against. <laughs> right, right. It I was have, definitely a learning experience for yeah, for, yeah. for good. You failed you forward, know? though. Yeah, it made me better leader for sure. Yeah, man, I've really enjoyed this conversation with too, you. Man. I've learned a lot about you um, and your story. I love how you've grown as a leader, and I didn't know that story about you and how you used to stutter mm -hmm. and how you had mentors encourage you to get more self-confident and speak up more. I didn't know about that when, you know, when we planned out this podcast, but hearing your background 
and what all you've done and from the army to SWAT teams to counter sniper in Afghanistan to U.S. Marshal now and here in your your leadership journey as well from quiet guy on the sideline to right out in front leading everybody. Um, man, you, you've got an incredible leadership story. Um, and I just want to say thank you for your leadership in men's Alliance, man, you, you took men's Alliance and started a tribe out of, out of scratch yeah. from scratch in a place where there wasn't one. And now it's, you know, men's lives are being changed and that's what's yeah. important. And God is using that fire that you guys build every single week to bring more men and their families to him. So thank you, brother, for your leadership, for your time today. Yeah, man. It's definitely my pleasure. <laughs> Great to meet you. And I hope Likewise. we, uh, I hope we can connect further after this because we got some similar backgrounds. So it was great. Uh, I love coming that. on and thank you for like you said, everything you're doing in your area just to lead men and, um, and in your church and in your tribe. So thank you. Amen. Thank you. And it's also just been a it. ton of fun. What's more fun yeah. than sitting around talking about a good war movie and, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and you know, just chatting about our favorite parts from band of brothers episodes. And, um, I think this is a great way to study the art and the science of leadership is through these examples. So guys, if you haven't yet go watch band of brothers and, um, next week we're going to be going through, um, episodes. Was it five and six five and with, six, yeah. with, uh, savage, from Spartan tribe. And that's going to be awesome to hear the good, the bad, the ugly leadership examples that he pulls from those. So guys, I want to tell you, um, help us out, help out men's Alliance, review us, give us a, a rating, leave a comment on our YouTube page. If you're not listening to this podcast on YouTube, if you're listening to it somewhere else, go to YouTube and check it out there. Leave us a comment, subscribe to our channel help us grow our YouTube presence. I know we got a lot of listeners on Spotify and Apple iTunes as well, but if you go check us out on YouTube, we would appreciate it. Shadow would appreciate it. I would. Yes. I'll answer you back. If you leave a comment, I'll answer you back. Awesome. So. There you go. So guys, uh, appreciate what you guys are doing out there all across the nation, building these fires every single week for men's Alliance and, and you're changing lives and you guys are great leaders and we're going to continue to grow as leaders and grow the leaders around us as well. So I'll see you guys around the fire. Thanks for listening to the Men's Alliance podcast. We hope to see you in one of our tribes or at one of our unforgettable weekend experiences. So join us at mensalliancetribe.com. How did Men's Alliance find you? Last year uh, at the Ignite Conference. I was uh, sitting towards the back, you know, with the fellas. It was actually a couple of uh, other husbands in uh, the marriage group that I um, facilitate. Yeah. And, um, you know, one of my guys, uh, actually, you may know him. Um, his name is Rick Wofford. He's actually trying to start a tribe up in Hawaii. But yep. anyway, yep. So he comes up behind me. So he accidentally went to one of the breakout rooms. He was looking for another room. And, oh, uh, I yeah, love this yeah, story. Yeah, he, yeah. He shows up in there, and he's like, "All right, well, this seems kind of interesting." So he's, um, you know, he sits in, and he comes up behind me afterwards, like all excited. He was like, comes up behind my head, you know, behind my ear, and was like, "Mark, yeah, dude, I think we should do it, man. We should start a men's group." And I'm like, <laughs> you know, like, like what? slow down, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, we're doing the, you know, the marriage group and all um, and work and all that stuff, and then um. To God be the glory, man. We just took off from there, brother. You know, that's awesome. straight up. Yep. So that's how we learned. And now um, the tribe, we have probably about 15 dudes or so that's going to come to this year's Ignite next month.